Hey, what's up, guys? It's Shadow624. Um, I've been requested a whole crap ton to try and make tutorials on how to make some of my sprite effects. Uh, now, keep in mind, I am not really a teacher, so I'm gonna apologize in advance because some of my explanations are probably not gonna be that thorough. Uh, but anyway, uh, the first one, the first effect that I'd like to go over, and uh, the mo probably the most simplest effect that I could go over for the first one are shockwaves. Now shockwaves are used for like hit sparks and ground hits and crap like that and they're actually really really easy to make. So for this you're gonna need Photoshop and Flash both CS. Well you don't need CS6 for Photoshop but you're gonna need CS6 for Flash. So just open up Photoshop and this is what one of them is gonna look like. It's kind of a spiky look just commonly seen in uh, Toho Scarlet with a Rhapsody and this is just a basic fade shockwave. Now these are both, like I said before, really really easy to make. So what you're going to want to do is just open a new file. Usually I just have mine set to 600 by 600 pixels uh, with a uh, relatively high resolution, so just hit OK. I get rid of the background because I dislike it and I find it useless. I make the background completely black, make a new layer, uh, set a set up a white to black gradient going from the bottom uh, about halfway should work fine go to filter distort and polar coordinates and it'll f uh, circle around the whole uh, canvas actually making a new layer wasn't really necessary use the elliptical marquee, marquee tool hold alt and shift to make a perfect circle and make it pretty big Go to select inverse, or no, not select inverse, my bad. Uh, transform selection is what I meant. And have it snap to the edges of the canvas. Now, while holding Alt and Shift, drag it to where it about, to where the fade about ends. Right about there. Hit enter. Go to select inverse. Uh, go to the layer, go to the correct layer. Um, delete the white and merge it to the black background. Now usually when I do this I blur it to get the edges to look a little more soft so I use blur more and control F to do it a few more times. Alright, it's nice and soft. Now go to give it a color go to adjustments hue and saturation and the color I usually go for for dream the one the color the color I've been using for dream versus dream has been pink so I bring the saturation all the way up, and I usually go with 310 is usually the color I use. And that's how you make that just basic shockwave. Pretty, pretty simple. All right, now let's make the spike one. Same deal. Black background. Oops. Nope. Sorry. There we go. Same thing from the bottom, about halfway. Now go to Filter, Distort, and Wave. And you're gonna want Triangle, and you're gonna want it to look... Honestly, this is a toss-up. It could look like anything, and probably still get you know basic shape if you're looking for. I kinda hate this because it doesn't give you a correct preview. It doesn't look anything like what it's going to look like. You gotta mess around with it. Mm, that might work. Now you want to select the whole thing and get rid of the one that's going all the way to the top of the screen. And get rid of that other crap because it doesn't really have a good edge around it or, you know, like doesn't fade very well to the right. Because you're going to polar coordinate, or you're going to you're going to polar this uh, distort whatever the correct word for that is. You're going to polar it around the edges so you want it to have a decent repeat. I guess is somewhat correct way of put saying that. Now you want to crop the edges out that you just put out there. And let's pull or coordinate this and see what it looks like. Mm, yeah, that might work. Do the same thing we did with the other shockwave. Er, nope, not the square. The elliptical. Uh, transform selection. Snap it to the edges. Get it 
to where you want it to go. Which could be anywhere, really. Let's try there. Select inverse, get rid of that. Uh, yeah, that kind of looks like that kind of looks like shit, but that should do for now. I mean, this is a tutorial. I'm hoping you're getting the basic idea behind doing this in. And make a new layer and make the same stock wave we made before, but make it a lot smaller. I'll show you why in a few seconds. Here, crap. screen and transform it in and that's way too noticeable so I'm gonna ch uh, get the opacity down the main point of this is to get it to look a little less blocky on the edges Let's go to like 35 opaque. Merge all the layers together. Blur it some more to make it a little less uh, clunky around the edges, I guess. Would be the correct word. Uh, go back to this, hue and saturation. Click colorize. Bring that all the way up. And just give it whatever color you want. I'm just going to give it pink. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make another tutorial on how to animate it in Flash, and I'm going to make another tutorial after that for how to make uh, equally, uh, or no, not equally fading, but shockwaves that fade out um, in, I don't know, how do, how do I even put that? Uh, it's hard to explain this kind of crap. Uh, a shockwave that fades out and it gets smaller as it fades out. I don't know. I guess I'd, I'd, yeah, that, that works. Anyway, I'll see you later for now.